Rob's Forest Garden. That's me. I'm Rob. We are in the southwest of England in the county of Somerset on the northern slopes of the Mendip Hills overlooking the Chew Valley Lake. This is a one hectare site that's about two and a half acres. My chosen method of cultivation here is agroforestry or forest gardening which, to put it simply, is a system of useful plants, all growing together symbiotically, that utilises the vertical dimension a bit more creatively and productively. There are currently about 470 varieties of edible species growing here at the moment, that all have multiple uses. As well as being directly edible, they may be a companion plant to the one next to it, keeping away its pests or diseases, or it simply may be a good nectar and pollen plant for the bees, or a nitrogen fixer, feeding the others around it, or to help build the soil, or simply for firewood, or habitat, or more often than not it's all of these things together. But less about that for now, that's what the other videos on this channel are supposed to be about. This is more specifically about what it's like to live off-grid. There are various temporary structures around the site. There's this yurt, or gur if you're Mongolian, that acts as my living room stroke permaculture classroom. There's the caravan, that's currently used as my kitchen and for food storage. It's the only entirely rodent-proof place here, hence why it's the perfect place to harbour the harvest at the moment. That shed we passed houses a toilet and shower, and the shepherd's hut is my bedroom. I do have electricity. It comes from a mishmash of collected solar panels of varying wattages. I use deep cycle leisure batteries for storing it. Mostly I run 12 volt systems, like in the shower shed, tool shed and caravan but I have an inverter to step it up to 240 volts for the yurt and the shepherd's hut, though I save that for special occasions, especially this time of year when electrical power becomes more of a luxury, ironically when it's most needed. On a hill near a wood, when nobody goes, on the track, through a gate, the food forest grows, with secrets and treasures for everyone's pleasure, and Rob's discover, Rob's discovery. What's it like to live off grid? Living off the land, the good life, doing the self sufficient thing. Well, it's been nine years now and no two years have been the same. No two months have been the same. No two days, in fact. The weather and the seasons very much dictate what each day looks like, as well as what crop is available to eat and harvest that day. For example, there are the root vegetables of winter, and the leaves and the shoots of spring, and the flowers and fruits of summer, and mushrooms and nuts of the autumn, with many crossovers and variations of course. The autumn equinox occurred yesterday, so there's now about 12 hours of light and 12 hours of dark. What do I do all day? It's, it's funny, people often ask me what I do all day. I suppose they think it's the life of Riley. Bed of bloomin' roses! <laughs> well I'll let you into a little secret. So taking yesterday, as a typical September day, when I'm here at home and not going out to work. I wake up about 7 a.m. Get out of bed slowly. <laughs> Run a comb across my head.
Consult the almighty to-do lists and try and choose the two most important things that I have to get done that day and then anything else is a bonus. Well, I can't say I always get them done. You can listen to the message and hear how drunk she is. So, sorry, Emma, I can't stay. I've just had an idea. A cup of tea. I hope it's not too milky for you. Uh, thanks. Oh, I'm sorry about your mum and dad. I tried to put them off coming. No, it's fine. Maybe now they've seen you're okay, they'll be a bit more chill. There are the geese and the ducks to see too, every day. Morning duckies. Not only are they a vitally important part of this miniature ecosystem, but also a constant source of amusement. The Campbell ducks are for keeping on top of the slug population and the geese are for grass mowing and to protect the ducks from foxes, although they're my friends as well. there's nearly always something to mend or maintain, usually at a mightily inconvenient time. Thank <laughs> you. 
go in in a minute.
Hello girls. Here you go. Here you go girls. a very hands-off approach to keeping honeybees here but it just so happens that yesterday the worry hive needed some attention before the winter including adding a little extra insulation on top to ensure they're nice and snug as the days darken and the weather cools Nice, clean, dry box, wax moth free. Ah! All right, girls, just me in a suit. Don't worry. There you go, girls. Nice extra bit of insulation for you. There you go girls.
the water supply is gravity fed spring water that's then pumped to where it's needed but that's only for washing and watering etc. I get my drinking water from a spring a short walk away that I have to collect by hand in bottles. Other typical September jobs include maintaining the wild flower meadow areas by artificially grazing them, i.e. scything or strimming them, and removing the herbage to enrich the ground elsewhere, but to keep the soil poor to allow the flowers to thrive there. early tomorrow afternoon. It'll be fun. That means helping to move a lot of bales.
do is go to the quiz finish. I reckon I have another call to make. <laughs> Jazza McQuarrie, say hello to your mojo. Back home after a short vacation. <laughs> <laughs> I can kiss Chris the ring feet. Yeah. I don't mind coming back. It's much better if it gets home at the normal time. Come on then, duckies, and you go. Go on, girls. There you go, go on then. Go on, duckies. Good night, girls. Not that way. Follow your sisters. Go on then. Go on. Good night, girls. Good night. You do some good garden, girls. Good night. Some swarm of bees. Never see one in September. Can you see it? Can certainly hear it. It's a pretty labour intensive life on the whole, or at least at the moment, whilst I'm still getting things planted and set up. But yes, it's truly satisfying and my smugness feels justified by the wholesomeness. <laughs> Though sometimes not speaking with anyone for a few days can make one go a bit peculiar. What makes me say that? Well, look who I'm speaking with. Thank you very much for watching and see you soon. Good night.